So, good day to all of you. Greetings from Greece. And let me introduce myself. My name is Mara Gyoka. I'm cognitive psychologist and neuropsychologist, currently working on Aristotle University of Thessaloniki and um, the Greek Alzheimer Association. Today's presentation is titled as a person-centered dementia training program um, for staff in general hospitals. And we're going to discuss about the content, the implementation, and to give some guidelines uh, regarding this program. Um, to starting with, I would like to give you an overview about this um, uh, presentation, starting from the healthcare professionals education and a little bit uh, background uh, information. Um, and then we're going to, to continue uh, on how we developed a dementia training program in our hospitals and give some details about the methods and the content of this particular program. Uh, and at the end of this presentation, we're going to talk about how we, we implement this program um, in our hospitals and to give some results um, of the measurements. But let's start with uh, some background information. We do know that people with dementia are vulnerable to hospital surroundings, but why has this happened? It's true that um, um, one quarter of hospitalized patients have a dementia diagnosis, and this patient is going to, to stay in hospital longer um, um, related to other patients, uh, and um, uh, they're going to have negative outputs. Um, people with dementia uh, have difficulties due to cognitive decline, uh, the stressful or unfamiliar hospital environment, and of course, because of staff's little knowledge about dementia. So we do know that these patients need special care. According to bibliography, uh, there are substantial needs to educate, to educate formal caregivers. And uh, we do need more education in general hospitals for specific techniques in caring, treatment, but of course, nutrition too. So let's continue about how we develop this dementia training program. We conducted, we conducted a survey uh, at the beginning of this um, um, project. Uh, and we explored about the expectations of nursing personnel and physicians on dementia training. So um, uh, we, looked, we looked at uh, what are the specific needs of all these professionals in the hospitals. And then uh, we explored uh, what are exactly the effective training. So uh, we published um, uh, a systematic review uh, about the evaluation and effectiveness of dementia staff training programs in general hospitals. And we applied um, a, a model, the Holton's three level model, in order to, to, to see through um, on how um, trainings are effective. And let's see now some methods and the content of this program. So regarding the methods, um, and regarding the settings and participants, um, we used uh, a 14 two days workshops uh, training. Uh, each um, training uh, included 10 hours um, uh, of um, uh, teaching. Um, our participants were 242 uh, professional uh, staff. Uh, and of these, uh, almost 91% uh, were nurses. Uh, almost 5% were administ administrators and other staff, and only 3% uh, were physiotherapists. We used two general hospitals, um, uh, and they participated um, overall 70 clinics, departments, uh, administrators, sectors, laboratories, and of course, outpatient clinics. Regarding the material that we used, as you can see uh, on this photo right, we used two informative leaflets about uh, information um, regarding dementia, um, a booklet for exercises in order to, to practice themselves, uh, the, the participants, 
a booklet for staff that uh, includes all the information that are given um, orally um, in our presentation. So um, they had a booklet in order to, to, to read it again in their home. We gave also seven cards with scenarios of challenging behaviors and possible solutions. Uh, of course, um, we give them a getting to know me card, uh, which is a card that um, uh, there is documented um, um, some information about the patient and is designed to stand up by the hospital bedside. Um, at the end of the training, um, uh, we give them a questionnaires and, evalu and evalu evaluation forms in order to be measured and of course a map with the rights of people with dementia. Regarding the content, um, it was included uh, six modules. The first module was about the general knowledge about dementia and we give a medical view of dementia uh, in this topic. The second one was the communication is dementia, how we communicate with um, people with dementia. The third one was about personal centered approach in dementia, which is a really useful and important topic. Uh, the fourth one uh, was the understanding and dealing with challenging behaviors, uh, a really important too topic because uh, people, because professional staff don't know how to deal with all these difficult behaviors. Uh, the fifth module was about the care of dementia and practices in activities of daily living. And the last one, um, it was about the, um, uh, the healthcare professionals. Um, uh, it was about the caring, the carer, uh, really important also a uh, module uh, about themselves and how to care themselves. So let's see now in more details about all these modules, uh, starting from the first one uh, in which we gave an introduction. We talked about some myths and reality. Uh, participants had the chance to show a video, a really useful video that um, uh, there is in uh, YouTube and you can find it. It's the Barbara story. Um, in the second part of uh, this uh, first modules, we talk about the general information, general knowledge of dementia, and we give a medical view of the disease, such as the type of dementia, uh, some pharmaceutical or no pharmaceutical approaches. We gave also some screening tools of dementia, of, of dementia such as uh, Minimental. Um, or delirium or um, uh, a questionnaire about how to identify pain. Uh, and all these um, uh, participants had the chance to practice them uh, by exercising exercises and videos. So let's see an example about all these exercising and this um, um, uh, interaction with the participants, the training participants. We gave this uh, slide um, in order to, to practice um, uh, the brain regions. As you can see, um, uh, we show them the frontal lobes, the parietal, the temporal, the limbic system, uh, and of course the hippocampus. And then after they uh, read, uh, read it um, in a well matter, they, uh, they use this brain map and they asked to locate brain regions which are used in a daily routine task like preparing breakfast. That was the exercise and we have the, the chance to, to discuss about all this um, uh, and to learn in a better way um, how all these brain regions um, uh, are needed for, uh, to, to do a, a daily uh, activity. The second module was about the communication. So here we gave some general tips and communication techniques. Of course, here we, we did again exercises and um, participants um, uh, watch a video. Here is an example uh, about um, the slides uh, of the training. Um, the first one, um, the first tip is to uh, about the orientation the guidance and clear messages to the patient. So every time that we um, visit a patient, we have to introduce ourselves 
and we have also to call the patient with he, his or her name um, to give reminders for time, day, or relationships. For example, I'm Mary, I'm nurse, and today I will take care of you. Or thank you, Mr. Papas, that you let me take your blood pressure. This helps me to take care of you well. Or Mr. Jones, could I take your, your blood pressure, please? Is really, um, really need to, to be polite with our patients. Uh, it is also important to speak direct in front of the patient, to be gentle and calm. Uh, and of course, it's really important also to ask for her or his permission to do things. It's really important to think the politeness. The second tip is to, to give confirmation of communication needs. So we don't have to underestimate his or her need for communication. We all need communication. So we can start and keep the communication like this. Um, what or who or where or how and not why. Why is a two general questions and our patient is gonna be frustrated answering that kind of question. So uh, it's really helpful to, to, to ask what, what, what is it, who, who was um, here? Um, who is your child? for example. And um, we can try to ask closed questions instead of open questions. It's a really uh, helpful tip also. Uh, for example, uh, it's really useful to ask, do you like chocolates? And not what is your favorite food? Because if we ask, do you like chocolates? The answer is yes or no. So it's easy for the patient to, to, to answer it. But in the other case, what is your favorite food? It's a too general question too. And it's uh, really difficult for them uh, to answer it, especially when they are in the last stages of uh, dementia, hmm? when the, uh, the communication is too poor. Um, so we can observe carefully the dialogue to unfold, and we have to try to understand what patient understands. And every time to change the way the questions are asked in order to, to, to be uh, understandable by the, the, the patient. Let's move now in the third module, um, uh, which was about the personal center approach in dementia. Here we discussed about the principles of personal center approach, about the implementation of this approach during hospitalization, and the importance of activity in daily living. And we, uh, of course, give uh, here also the, some exercises to do uh, in order to understand it in a better way. Um, an example um, from uh, this module is, is this. Here, as you can see, the person with, the, with dementia uh, is uh, in the center of the circle. Um, and uh, we have, of course, around this, um, the dementia itself, the cognitive disorder, for example, uh, the health, the overall health of the patient, because um, a patient, um, uh, is um, um, of course is going to have um, some um, other health matters to to confront uh, uh, during hospitalization. Uh, the third factor that is really important is the hospital environment, which is really hard because staff is strangers uh, for the patient, and uh, patients may be um, gonna be frustrated uh, due to this um, situation. Uh, the other important factor is the biography or the story of life of each patient. And we're going to see why is this important and why is this useful to know uh, more about their story life and how we can, we can use it um, in a good matter um, in order to, to care um, in a better way this patient. Uh, of course, the personality is really important to know, uh, the personality of patient. Uh, so uh, maybe it's useful to, to deal with uh, several situations if we know some things about their personality. And of course, the social environment is too important. For example, the care relationships and supporting during hospitalization. 
who is the person that uh, is cared these patients? Hmm? What is the relationship exactly? So all these factors are really important in order to, to provide a good care of a person with dementia. So um, uh, in this situation, we, uh, we ask the participants which of these we can influence or interfere with. And uh, for which of those things we cannot influence. Um, and if uh, our knowledge about the person help in their care. So it was, uh, it was a good start to, to, um, to talk about all these things and to start a conversation about all these things and to see how participants, how, how healthcare uh, staff uh, is thinking about all these matters. Uh, okay, and um, move on. Um, on a paradigm here, an example about a biography or a story of life. Um, we do know that our lives um, and our personal stories are unique. As the recent memories are disrupted, events from the distant past became confused with experience of the present. Uh, so knowing a person's past, it can, it, it can help us for caring her or him and communicate with him or her. So uh, by this situation, the long-term memory is the strength of people with dementia. So reminiscence or happy memories can be useful tool and fun experience for them. So we use uh, their bi uh, biography in order to, to handle or to deal with um, several difficult situation. Um, or to remember them some happy memories. It's a good way to deal with uh, some a difficult situation that we confront from them. And this is the Getting Me to Know Me card. Uh, this card is designed to be viewed by the bedside. It's not a medical document, of course, and it does not have to be completely. Uh, if it is completed, please be mindful not to include information that you would not want to be shared with others. So here are some um, uh, guidelines to, to, um, to complete this card. And um, it can be completed either from um, um, the patient or um, their partner, the husband or a friend or a child um, uh, that is companion to, to, to them to, in the hospital. And here are the questions uh, and the boxes that um, um, they have to fill in. Um, so in the first box, um, the topic is events and places that are important to me. The second one is about people, animals, things that are important to me. The third one is about how, how I like to spend my time. Uh, the other one is things that are important in my daily routine. So we are going to, gi uh, to give uh, information about uh, the routine of patient or what he likes or dislikes um, uh, in his life. Uh, the other one, uh, what helps um, when I'm anxious or sad. It's a really important uh, uh, topic here to be filled. It's really helpful. Um, uh, and of course, what I like and dislike in general. Um, so if we completed this card, uh, it's for sure a, a good tool um, in order to handle uh, our um, patients and um, care them in a, uh, good, in a good way. In the fourth module, um, uh, we discussed about understanding and dealing with challenging behaviors. So um, uh, we talked about causes of challenge, challenging behaviors, techniques of finding solutions, uh, and we practices the getting to know me card, as we already see. So uh, here um, we started um, discussions with participants and uh, a good way to do this, uh, it was to, to present this slide here because uh, the behavior that we observe, what we see is only the, topic, the top of the iceberg. Uh, under the surface of the sea, um, 
there is what we don't see or we don't understand. For example, maybe uh, the patient is starting to scream or to wonder or to resist to care because he or she feeling lost or because it is a side effect of medicine and we have to check it. Because he or she has different perspective perspe perception of reality, sorry. Or because of the perceptual or visual difficulties of the patient. Uh, or maybe he or she had emotional needs or stress. Uh, or they have a need to spend energy to do something. Or there is a, um, a physiological need, such as uh, food or hydration, or uh, this patient is in pain, or uh, he needs toilet. Maybe he or she um, feels some fear, or uh, delirium uh, maybe um, is a cause of um, a difficult behavior. So we have to explore, uh, we have to identify which of all these causes um, um, can provide a difficult behavior. And this is another example um, um, of the training. Um, so we discussed which factors can influence the person's behavior. Um, there are three basic factors. The first one is the biological, the second one is the psychological, and third one, the social factor. Regarding the biological, um, we didn't know that people with dementia have cognitive uh, deficits. Um, maybe um, a possible cause is the physical health, a pain or a delirium. Uh, maybe there is a sensory impairment, such as a hearing loss or a visual loss. Or they have some physical needs. Maybe they are thirsty or hungry or they need to go to the toilet. The second factor um, is psychological. Maybe they have some thoughts or perception or they maybe they in, interpret the reality in a different way uh, from these that we um, uh, interpret the reality. Or maybe feel sad or anger or frustration or joy. The third factor is the social factor. Maybe a possible cause for uh, a difficult situation is um, um, maybe a bad interaction with others or the absence of family members or the influence of itself of the hospital environment because staff is stranger uh, or um, the simple absence of stimuli. They have not to do anything. So they have a lot of energy. Uh, so maybe um, the, the behavior of wandering uh, is because of this. They have an energy, so they want to, to, to walk around. And here we gave um, an example and an exercise to do, to be done uh, by uh, participants. Uh, Mary is a 70, 73 years old lady from Thessaloniki. She has dementia and she was admitted to the internal department with a respiratory infection four days ago. Uh, Mary responds well to antibiotics, receiving oxygen th uh, through a, a nasal cannula, but she constantly wants to leave. And Mary is wandering around the clinic, uh, has shortness of breath, and she is disorientated. One day she left the clinic and disappeared into the hospital premises. So here is presented a, a case study uh, that participants um, uh, needed to, to be solved and to find out um, which um, possible biological, psychological or social factors may lead uh, to this behavior. Um, Let's move on on the fifth module, um, which was about the care in dementia and some practices in activity of daily living. Uh, here uh, we presented the modern care model, including the personal uh, center uh, approach and some tips for feeding, bath and clothing. Participants saw some videos and we also uh, presented uh, the restraints and how to avoid them and of course, uh, the legal rights of people with dementia. 
Let's see uh, an example about the bath. Every time Mr. John had to take a bath, he would start crying or yelling and becoming aggressive. So we find out some possible, so, so possible causes here. Maybe the person be afraid because he cannot perceive the concept of the water depth or uh, is shamed to be naked in front of relatives or strangers. Maybe these are the causes. Uh, and here are some tips or how to confront um, all these situations. So um, in this particular case study, we have to take into consideration the physical environment, the emotional environment, and the social environment. Starting with the physical environment, um, we have to, um, to have a relaxing music or to, to sing some songs with the patients. Um, another solution is to, to touch them softly and be not violent um, uh, in the entrance into the bath. Um, also, we can use a bath seat uh, to provision uh, and um, to offer supportive assistance. Regarding the emotional environment, we have to reassure uh, the patients and to do comfort talks uh, with them. Um, and in some cases to start a pleasant conversation with them or a conversation about happy moments. That's why it's really important the, um, um, the getting to know me card, because if we know what um, our patient likes, we have to, um, to use it um, in a such situation like a bath here. Um, of course, um, there's no rush to do the bath. Um, it's really important to know the person's routine, for example, how and when prefers to take a bath. And if person afraid the water, we can use a bath sponge uh, in order to, to do it um, more easy. Of course, another factor, another important factor is the social environment uh, regarding the inhibitions or the shame that may patient feel. Um, we can place a towel over its shoulder while you're helping them um, bathing, and we can pull the bath curtain for some privacy. So uh, these are um, some advice in order to, to help um, in a difficult situation. Uh, and let's end um, um, the modules um, with the last one about the caring the carer and the self-care of the healthcare professionals. Uh, here we presented uh, the well-being state versus burnout symptoms. Uh, we talked about emotional regulation uh, as a provided technique in a stressful situation. And we gave also exercises and participants had the chance to, to watch some videos about them. Uh, let's see an example from this um, uh, slides. Uh, so we gave some indicators of low well-being here. Um, let's see um, um, the brain system, the vascular system, and the um, uh, gastrointestinal system that may um, are influenced about the anxiety, depression, uh, anger, irritability, or chest pain. All these are symptoms of um, uh, low well-being um, and some physiological um uh, diseases, um, um, yeah, um, and here, uh, here are some characteristics of burnout. We had this chance to talk uh, about the burnout, and we gave them also uh, a questionnaire about burnout in order to 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 measure um, uh, if our participants. Um, um, had uh, high scores uh, in such a questionnaires or not. So there are three characteristics of uh, burnout. The first one is the exhaustion. The second one is the de depersonalization, the cynicism. And the third one is the feeling of uh, unfulfillment or ineffectiveness. So um, all these three factors um, um, are really important to exist in order to, to um, to be safe, uh, say that somebody have a burnout. And then we discussed about the emotional regulation that is really important um, uh, 
to to provide some techniques uh, in order to have a good adaptivity um, in our thoughts. Um, for example, um, uh, we discussed about the cognitive reappraisal. Uh, that is a, a very good adaptive strategy um, in stress. Um, using this um, strategy, we have more positive uh, feelings and uh, we do learn how to change our way of thinking between feeling and fact. Uh, and um, people that use this kind of strategy uh, usually have um, more physical health uh, and better cognitive functions um, versus the expressive suppression, of course, which is um, another strategy, but uh, it's not a good adaptive strategy. Um, by using this uh, kind of strategy, we have less, um, less good feelings and we are less emotionally expression. Um, people that they usually use this kind of strategy have less well-being. And this is a prediction about anxiety and triggers the burnout. So if somebody um, has a burnout, is more um, 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 it's more um, usual to to use such a kind of uh, strategy, the expressive suppression. Um, by using this um, less adaptive strategy, uh, maybe somebody feel uh, shame, accusation against others uh, to have destructive thoughts or feelings. So it's not recommended to use it. And here are some exercises about um, um, uh, the last module and caring uh, yourself. So we asked from participants, what do you do when you are under stress? Record your reactions and say what self-regulation strategies you usually use. And then um, uh, we asked them to, to write down the warning signs of stress because it's really important to recognize them uh, and to consider who is the most important person to discuss personal things at work or um, at his uh, home, at, at their home. Um, and the, the, the last schedule of this um, exercise uh, was to write down as many stress relief activities that they can in three minutes. So we have uh, we had a perfect chance to discuss uh, about all these stressful factors um, and uh, take good advice um, about how they confront this difficult situation, this difficult uh, situation about the, the anxiety, dealing uh, um, with the anxiety. So after all, um, we implemented this dementia program and the results um, are published um, um, uh, in brain sciences uh, some years ago. This is the publication and let's see um, very quickly the most important uh, results. So uh, the pre, post and follow up measurements uh, show that we have a better positive attitude toward dementia, better knowledge and confidence in caring after the training in time point two. These changes remains three, three months later in the time point three, but there was a slight decline in knowledge in time point three compared to time point two. So overall, our results were very good in order to, to um, um, to take a better knowledge about uh, dementia matters and um, to have a better attitude toward dementia. We had, of course, some reflection accounts. Um, one participant told us that it was very useful. All hospital staff should be trained. Another one told us that it was an interactive lot. Shink through the patient eye. I can care with more empathy now. And another one told us that communication techniques, videos and cards about handling, uh, about handling challenging behaviors are all good tools. Um, so the feedback generally uh, was really good.
At that point, I would like to thank you for your attention. And let me show you our team here. Um, um, here is our project, the Dementia and General Hospitals from the University of Heidelberg and the NAR institution. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Have a good day.